Hi guys, welcome back to today's wishes. Today I'm going to do the VIP daily living tag and it was created by Life of a Blind Girl, hi Hall, and My Blurred World. They have amazing blogs so go check them out. I will link them down below in the description box and I will read the questions with my Apple MacBook. So let's get on with it. Number one, when you're preparing an outfit, do you have your clothes set out for you? And how do you sort of arrange them? Um, sorry if I don't like dictate the questions exactly as they're said, because I'm reading it from voiceover and memory and blah blah. I'm trying to make it good for y'all guys. Okay, so basically I arrange my clothes in my wardrobe from like different, I have different shelves for different things and different um, drawers. So, say, in my wardrobe, I, to the left of it, it's a double one because I'm obsessed with clothes, I'm a beauty blogger, um, and in the left I've got all hung up is my jackets and then my jumpers and my cardigans and some of Ollie's clothes when he comes back from uni, um, and then below that is like, um, like literally all of it separate, um, I won't go too much detail but basically if you want a wardrobe tour let me know in the comments below um but yeah I have my underwear in one drawer it's all sectioned out um say I've got one for skirts one for leggings one for trousers different stuff like that and I also label them with my pen friend if I want to be really specific so um yeah number two okay number two when I want to buy new clothes do I go online shopping on my own or do I go with someone else and my answer is I go with my sister Alice I've probably talked about this in so many videos but yeah she helps me pick out all my clothes and this is just so I can have my own individual style really all the um websites like for Topshop and etc etc they're great and everything but they're very image oriented and when you can't see that's a real problem because they don't necessarily like put descriptions on the images or their websites aren't that easy to navigate as as such do you know what i mean or their descriptions are like you know say skinny jeans in black but like you might not know whether they've got like specific buttons on i mean i don't know but there we go that's an example okay so when i go shopping with my friends or family do i have any specific thing that they um choose um and to be honest my sister just knows me like we're the same person in terms of like fashion and makeup like she knows that i like more girly stuff compared to her but our our tastes are like merging and to be honest i trust my sister alice with everything that i wear and without her literally i don't know what i'd do i think i'd have a meltdown because she's literally the blind girl the blind girl's equivalent of like a unique and amazing gorgeous mirror so yeah that would be my answer do i find it difficult to pick out an outfit because of my blindness um not really actually because i have it all set out and it's kind of easy the way i have it like if it if i didn't have the things in place and different things i wouldn't be so confident but because like I've got it all in separate drawers, etc. It's quite easy. Do I find online shopping accessible? No, not really. I do it with my sister. Just my visual impairment, well, my blindness, stop me from applying makeup. Guys, do you want to add to that question? Um, I'll link Blind Girl Does Her Own Makeup down below. How do I organise my clothing and beauty products? Sorry, probably answered one of the above questions a bit wrong, but I organise, I've told you how I organise my clothing, my beauty products, I am up obsessed with new releases people sending me things it's just insane so what happens because me and my sister i live in the flat next door to my sister and basically what happens is in the main house we have a beauty room and basically all the obsessive makeup that i don't <laughs> that i don't use on a daily basis goes up there and me and alice sort it out and it's not necessarily labeled so when me, Alice and Ollie film for yesterday's wishes, well, we will be going up there in a couple of weeks. It's literally painted and getting the carpet done. So that's very exciting. Anyway, um, 
yeah we sort of put all our stuff up there so it's like a hoarder's makeup dream but down here like in my flat I have it's actually where you guys are sitting in the camera like behind you it's like a desk and I have like all my stuff so if you want to see my everyday makeup again leave a comment down below and I'll do a video about it do I have a mobility aid what is it it is my beautiful guide dog Olga sitting on the sofa right behind me which is a bit naughty because she's not really meant to go on the sofa but she's a very good girl and yeah <laughs> she's she just doesn't like she's only allowed to go on that sofa and yeah she's really sleepy and don't really have any other comments basically I use a cane and a dog and yeah do I prefer using Olga or to be sighted to go to to be honest full I was mentioned by someone on Twitter stop computer I'm doing a tag um yeah do I prefer being sighted guided or using a mobility aid well I love using Olga all of the time um especially when like I'm out with my friends and we wanted to talk but not like say step up Lucy step down Lucy it's great but say in the pub and stuff when I'm getting a bit tipsy with my mates I don't really want a mobility aid in that situation I would love having my friends guide me but to be honest I think different situations require different modes of transport in the blind world so yeah to like if I'm going to uni whatever love the dog if I'm going to the pub, my boy or my bezies. So that's my answer. 10, if I use a cane or self, feel self-conscious using it. Um, to be honest, yes, probably more than my dog. Um, that's why I got Olga in the first place because I was getting so many headaches with like concentrating and physically like tapping things. And it's all just like, it will give you a mental like, it will literally push on your brain. Well, it felt like it was pushing on my brain and being like, Lucy, you need to think about this, this and this. Whereas a dog sort of like, does it for you? Like you only have to think about certain things. Like I have to think about when Olga sits at curbs, but like, that's pretty much it. She'll like guide me around like a group of people and I won't have to really, it won't really matter that they're there. She'll sort of just be my eyesight for me. So in that respect, yeah. A long cane isn't too nice. When it comes to transport, do I go on the train and the bus myself? Um, right, this is complicated because over the past six months, if you haven't read my blog post, I will link it below, but it's about sight loss and depression. Um, I have recently dropped out of uni, out of law school, thinking about what I'm doing. And uh, basically the lowdown of that is because I couldn't cope with my sight loss um, all too well for the past six months. I'm happy now I've come out of it I didn't really tell you guys much about it until I wrote that blog post about the day in the life of the blind woman after my counsellor suggested it but that is <laughs> straight from the question anyway the reason that I mentioned that and transport is because a massive part of my depression and anxiety was going on transport and etc etc on my own and coping with that when you know always thinking in the back of my mind oh I, when I was sighted I could do this on my own blah blah so that is very much prevalent in the forefront of my mind I'm still trying to get over that um being always completely blind and on a bus will never be comfortable for me or on a train on my own with just Olga but having Olga there now in a taxi when I'm on my own is a lot better so I'm working on it that's what I would say so I can do it I am able to do it my mobility officers will say that to you with a cane and with my dog I can do it hi Terry and Emma um, and yeah literally um I can do it I just mental barriers mental barriers I will get there I'll let you know when I'm there how do you feel about traveling independently I said that in the last question so yeah take with that how you will did I attend mainstream slash specialist school um I attended a mainstream school but it had like a specialist unit on the side which I thought was really great because when I was sighted that was cool because you could dip in and out of the unit as you pleased as I pleased when, as I was losing my sight and yeah it was just really helpful and I still keep in touch with my teaching assistants and I'm actually meeting um, Max tomorrow so hi if you're watching Max. Oh if I had a choice which one would I prefer to go to? Um, 
definitely mainstream. I'm just a mainstream girl, really. Um, that sounds really weird. But there we go. I was, I was mainstream schooled for the whole of my life and I don't really think there should be a segregation. I think it's not really right because I'm just blind and I'm normal every other aspect. I mean, what is normal anyway? Anyway, that's getting on to another conversation. But yeah, personally, I think there is a place for specialist schools in some senses, but for me personally, no. So was my experience of um, education mostly positive or negative? Um, I would say there's high points and low points. I mean, begging teachers to enlarge my work when I could see wasn't the best highlights of my life. I remember my French teacher really didn't want to do it half the time and I would get so frustrated and in the end I was like, ah, I hate French. Um, but yeah, um, still, you know, I've got to work out what I'm doing with uni, as I said before. But to be honest, I think as long as you are on the ball with things and email people and get in touch with people and say, you know, look, hi, I'm the blind one in the class, you know, notice me and you have to have this resource and this resource ready for me. But to be honest, some people just don't have that. Like some people are absolutely amazing, like my history teacher, um, Miss Hancock, hi, if you're watching. Um, she was like absolutely amazing um, and other teachers at my school were like absolutely amazing. But when you come to uni, like, I guess some lecturers don't really think of that or s even some teachers at school, they didn't really think like, um, like of you in that respect. I mean, uh, they might not mean to, but it's like, ugh, sometimes it's really frustrating. So it just depends on the person, where you are, what you're doing, but you need to be on the ball. And so my <laughs> answer of that would be generally 50-50 and depending on what I'm gonna experience at uni, I will let you guys know. <laughs> but some have very mixed experiences, some unis are way better than others, and I think I was I was actually talking about this at a motivational speech I did, um, a mobility conference I went to. Um, I think it's MICE conference, I'll link it down below. Um, the mobility conference if you guys are interested or stalking me. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, no, but um, yeah, I was at a mobility conference and actually we were saying that, um, well I was saying that there needs to be like a page for like UK universities, like which blind person has felt that their DSA and their support has been, you know, really, really good at that uni and they've really taken stuff on board because I think it would just be really useful if there was like a page for just all the blind people wanted to go to uni and then they could just click on it and then they could go on to the unis that you know other people have had great experiences at and just get around things in an easier way anyway next did i um sorry i read that question and i was like i had a mental block um <laughs> did i carry on into higher education and if not why didn't why not um at the moment i am at a well i was at a mental block in the fact that i was um coping with sight loss, depression, all that stuff in my brain and I had a mental breakdown. Now I'm getting past that, well trying to, you know, every day isn't rosy but you know, life is what you make it, definitely. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better, a lot, lot, lot better than I was after counselling and support. So what I'm thinking of actually doing now is maybe going into journalism. Um, I'm still having all my options open and yeah all that good stuff but I'm just really deciding what I want to do with my life and I think presenting and motivational speaking is where I lie um, if you guys don't know I do do motivational speaking is Olga moving behind me I can hear her okay what are you doing okay you just she's laid down I heard her <laughs> um, if you guys don't know I do motivational speaking now um, and there is a contact form on yesterdayswishes.com if you would like to go and fill it out and have me as a speaker at your event I would be most excited to do so um, but yeah I think my, that's where my passion really lies I mean I love law but I the workload in it 
and my brain weren't going together. So yeah, I will do something, but I don't know what yet. What is your opinion on assistive technology for blind slash visually impaired people? Do you think it is vital? I think it's incredibly vital to my life. Um, obviously, I'm using a MacBook now. Um, and I wouldn't be able to really go on a computer without it. I use my iPhone every single day of my life. Um, and I've just upgraded to the iPhone SE because my other one was getting a bit sluggish because I feel like when voiceover gets a little bit sluggish on like the older phones, I'm like, oh, I wanna be, you know, caught up and uh, just, just have the best technology that you possibly can if you can afford it. And I think it's really important to do that so you can stay in touch with the world and it, your phone just brings everything to the palm of your hand and I love how with an iPhone SE I can experience that um, as well as everyone else and even Twitter has captions on it now guys if you guys put images on Twitter totally use that function because I'm totally just wanting to see your photos through my ears do you use assistive technology? yes I do Sister, what do, what apps or assistive technology do I use? I use all Apple products because I don't really like Jaws, even though I've sort of looked at it and I can sort of use it, but I get really confused. I just love Apple. Oh, there's low battery on me. In my MacBook and my camera. Oh, everything's dying. No. Don't sleep, Mac. Oh, what what can I not live without my iPhone? Definitely. Or tap tap C. Oh, that app is Jesus. If I could recommend one piece of technology to a blind person, what would it be? It would be a Apple MacBook or an iPhone. Definitely, then you need them in your life. Why? Because they're just insanely great and they don't slow down. I feel like you can be as quick as a sighted person with voiceover on them, whereas Jaws is like. I will wait 1,000 years until Jaws configures. I swear I retweeted something. Someone said that. If I retweeted that, that was just it's so funny. What's one per what? What is one thing that I would really like that I haven't got? Um, probably like I don't really know because I feel like I have things. <laughs> I know that's really like, but I I literally use Apple and that is great and I don't really think I mean I have a braille note taker and stuff that I've had from when I was at school and I think they're great they have their place but I don't really think I want anything else at the moment which is really lucky do I mainly have sighted friends or blind slash visually impaired friends mainly all my friends are sighted and um, my best friends at school are sighted but I do have Laura and Dale well Dale's not blind that's her boyfriend but I have Laura and she's like my best blind friend hey Laura if you're watching sweet um, and Holly I make her as Holly and Marley uh, Molly Burke go check out her channel and Holly as in life of a blind girl so yeah check them out how did I meet my blind slash visually impaired friends mostly through the internet Laura actually saw my videos and was like girl we have ginger hair oh my god we're so alike and then I was like oh my god we are love you and then, yeah, we've been friends ever since. Do sighted peers understand my disability and try to help me? Yes, definitely. I mean, there's some times where people have like dragged me across the road because they're like, come with me. And then I'm like, no, actually, um, I want to hear the beep and my guide dog is sitting on the side. So I would really rather you not touch me. Thank you. So yeah, there's situations like that, but I could go on forever. What's one thing I wish my friends understood? <laughs> to be honest, they're really good, um, but I guess no one will actually understand the daily struggle of waking up with no vision. Um, I guess no one will ever understand that unless you're going through it. So it's really great to have blind friends that actually really have the reality of it every single day. Um, I'm not saying that I would ever want my sighted friends or boyfriend or parents or lovely sister to ever go through that. Um, but I'm just saying. Yep. 26, who do I tag to do this post? I tag Molly from Molly Burke. Um, I've done a couple of collabs with her. Go check her channel out. And I tag Emily from Fashion Easter. So I hope you girls have fun with the tag. And I don't think there's anything else. Nope, that's it. Number 26, all done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for all my latest content. And I will see you very soon. Bye guys.
guys.